All of us know what it is like to be sick or to have a loved one that is sick. Wote tunajua nini maana ya kuumwa au kuwa na mtu anayeumwa au ndugu anayeumwa. Like me, you you've been sick before. Uh, kama or, mimi or maybe wewe, you're even sick now. Umewahi kuumwa na inawezekana pia unaumwa sasa hivi. Um, some of the sicknesses I've had God has healed miraculously. I remember three years ago I had these really bad migraines and God has healed me of that. Na nime nimewahi kuumwa miaka mitatu nyuma nilikuwa naumwa kichwa kiliuma sana lakini namshukuru Mungu ameniponya na ugonjwa huo. Some sicknesses God has not healed. So for instance I've had a problem with my back for about 14 years now and I've prayed and done different things and I still have that problem God hasn't healed that Kuna baadhi ya magonjwa Mungu hayaponyi mfano Shoshi amekuwa anaumwa mgongo kwa miaka zaidi ya 14 sasa na ameomba lakini bado anaumwa Mungu hajamponya bado And in some instances God has used doctors to to make me better I had ankle surgery a few months ago my ankle was in bad shape and I'm much better now I can run I can jump I can do things I could not do before surgery. Na baadhi ya magonjwa Mungu anatumia madaktari kama Sheshi aliumwa kifundo cha mguu lakini madaktari walimtibia akapona sasa anaweza kukimbia, kuruka na kufanya mazoezi yote. And you probably have your own story of a journey with sickness. Lakini na wewe unaweza kuwa na hadithi yako ya uponyaji. And no. the reality is our city is is full of sick people. Na ukweli mji wetu na wagonjwa wengi. And the temptation when we are sick is to think God has forgotten me, God does not love me. Na ni rahisi kufikiri Mungu amekuacha au Mungu akupendi unapokuwa unaumwa. Because if God really loved me, why has he allowed me to remain sick? Unajiuliza kama Mungu ananipenda kwa nini ameruhusu niugue? But the Bible does not teach that being sick is showing that God does not love you. That's Lakin, not what the Bible says. Lakini Biblia haifundishi kwamba ukiumwa Mungu akupendi. Si hivyo Biblia inavyofundisha. God loves sick people. Mungu anapenda wagonjwa. So let's turn to the Bible this morning we'll be reading from the Gospel of Matthew in chapter 14. And our main passage is two verses in chapter 14, verse 13 and verse 14. Tufungue Biblia zetu tutasoma kutoka kitabu cha Mathayo 14 na mistari yetu tutakayosoma leo ni Mathayo 14 mstari wa 13 na 14. Now when Jesus heard this he withdrew from there in a boat to a desolate place by himself. But when the crowds heard it they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore he saw a great crowd and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. Naye Yesu aliposikia hayo aliondoka huko katika chombo akaenda mahali pasipo watu faragani na makutano waliposikia walimfuata kwa miguu toka mjini mwao. Yesu akatoka akaona mkutano mkuu akawahurumia akawaponya wagonjwa wao. So Jesus had heard some news. He had heard that his relative uh, John the Baptist had been executed by Herod. Yesu alikuwa amesikia habari ndugu yake Yohana Mbatizaji aliuliwa na Herodi. And after John's disciples buried John they go and tell Jesus this is what has happened to John. Na baada ya wanafunzi wa Yohana kumzika walimfuata Yesu kumwambia hiki ndicho kilichomtokea Yohana. And when Jesus receives this news he decides to withdraw. Na Yesu aliposikia habari hizi aliamua kujitenga na watu. He decides to go to a quiet place all by himself. Aliamua kwenda sehemu tulivu yeye peke yake. There was a connection between John and Jesus. John and Jesus were relatives. Kulikuwa na mahusiano kati ya Yesu na Yohana Mbatizaji, walikuwa ndugu. Not only were John and Jesus relatives, John is the one who came to prepare the way for Jesus. Lakini sio tu kwamba walikuwa ndugu, Yohana ndiye aliyekuja kuandaa njia ya Yesu. John is the one who had baptized Jesus. Yohana ndiye aliyembatiza Yesu. So this was sad news for Jesus to receive about his relative. Kwa hiyo ilikuwa ni habari ya huzuni kwa Yesu kusikia kuhusu ndugu yake. And when Jesus hears the news, he decides to withdraw. Na Yesu aliposikia hizi habari aliamua kujitenga na watu. Maybe he withdrew because he wanted to mourn by himself. 
inawezekana alitaka kuwa peke yake kwa ajili ya kuhuzunisha msiba wa ndugu yake or maybe because of the connection between him and John he was concerned about safety for himself au labda alitaka kuwa salama kwa sababu ya mahusiano yake na John he decides to withdraw to a quiet place aliamua kwenda sehemu tulivu but that didn't really work out lakini hiyo haituambi zaidi because as he withdraws the people see him uh, lakini alipokuwa anajitenga na watu watu walimuona Jesus was very popular Yesu alikuwa mtu maarufu sana and as he starts to get away the people see him and they say there is Jesus we are going to follow him na kila alipokuwa akijitenga na watu watu walimuona na waliamua kumfuata they say he probably has a solution to my problem because Walisema, this was not the first time that crowds had followed Jesus and Jesus had met the needs of crowds. Watu walipomuona Yesu alisema labda inawezekana nikapata ufumbuzi wa changamoto yangu. So you imagine that you are here somewhere in Dar es Salaam and you get into a boat because you want to go and be on a quiet beach by yourself. Fikiria labda wewe unataka kwenda kwenye ufukwe mmoja wa Dar es Salaam kuwa peke yako. But before you get to that place because you are so popular people have seen you and they followed you there. Lakini kabla hujafika huko kwa sababu unafahamika watu wamekuona na wametangulia wanakusubiri. And they think you have the answer to their problem in Dar. Na wanafikiri wewe una ufumbuzi wa matatizo yao hapa Dar es Salaam. How would you react? I think for me I might say everyone please leave me alone. I've had a tough day. Je, wewe ungefanyaje? Nafikiri mimi ningesema naomba mniache, nimekuwa na siku ngumu leo. I'm also going through some tough times in Dar es Salaam. Na mimi pia nina matatizo magumu hapa Dar es Salaam. But that's not what Jesus did. Lakini sivyo alivyofanya Yesu. Jesus sees the crowd and he has compassion on them. Yesu aliona ule mkutano na akawa na akawahurumia. And he changes his plans. Na akabadilisha mipango yake. Because he has love for the people. Kwa sababu aliwapenda. If we have love for Dar es Salaam, kama sisi tunaipenda Dar es Salaam, we are going to be willing to be inconvenienced. Tunaweza kuwa tayari uh, kukwazwa. That even when we are going through our own tough things, japo tunapitia mambo yetu magumu, when a situation magumu, to show love to somebody comes up, hali ikitokea kuonyesha wengine upendo, we are willing to extend ourselves. Tunakuwa tayari. We are willing to show the love of God. Tunakuwa tayari kuonyesha upendo wa Mungu. Dar es Salaam can be so overwhelming. Dar es Salaam inaweza kuwa na changamoto nyingi. But God is calling us to be ready. Lakini Mungu anatuita tuwe tayari. To be inconvenienced. Kuwa tayari kukwazwa. To change our plans. Kubadilisha mipango yetu. So that we can show love to those around us. Ili kuonyesha upendo kwa wanaotuzunguka. It says that Jesus had compassion on them. Inasema Yesu akawaonea huruma. Compassion is to be moved on the inside. Kuwa na huruma ni kitu kinachotoka ndani. Something inside of you literally turns when you see a desperate situation. That is to have compassion. Ni kitu kinachotoka ndani yako unapomuona mtu yuko kwenye uhitaji. Jesus had deep care deep love for this crowd Yesu alipoona makutano aliwapenda Compassion is what you feel when you see someone suffering Huruma ni kitu unachokuwa nacho unachojisikia ndani unapomuona mtu anateseka He had compassion on them and he healed their sick so it was Jesus's compassion which led him to heal the sick Alipowaona aliwahurumia kwa hiyo ni huruma ya Yesu kuwaponya wagonjwa That was his motivation compassion Hiyo ndio ilikuwa motisha yake And his compassion was shown by him taking away the physical suffering of the people in this crowd Na huruma ya Yesu ilionekana pale alipoponya magonjwa ya hawa watu kwenye huu mkutano It should be the same of, for us if we are going to bring healing to the city of Dar es Salaam. We need to be motivated by compassion. Hata sisi vile vile motisha yetu inatakiwa iwe kuwaonea watu huruma kama tunataka kuwaondolea magonjwa yao. But the truth is in life we can be motivated by other things. Uh, we can be motivated by other things like making a name for myself. 
Tunaweza kuwa na motisha ya vitu vingine vingi. Motivated by proving something to somebody. Tunaweza kutaka majina yetu awe makubwa au kumuonyesha mtu fulani naweza kufanya kitu fulani. We can be motivated by building a big ministry, a big our own kingdom. Unaweza kuwa na motisha ya kutaka kujenga huduma kubwa. But for Jesus when there was suffering, his motivation was compassion. Lakini Yesu uh, motisha yake kubwa ilikuwa ni huruma ya uponyaji. Jesus healed they are sick. Amen. Yesu aliwaponya wagonjwa wao. That's not a small thing to read. Hakikuwa kitu kidogo. He had compassion and healed their sick. Alikuwa na huruma na aliwaponya wagonjwa wao. That tells us that Jesus Christ has the power to heal. Inatuambia kwamba Yesu alikuwa ana nguvu ya kuponya. In a large crowd like this one there would have been many different sicknesses. Hata kwenye kundi kubwa and kama Jesus had the power to heal all those different sicknesses. Kunaweza kuwa na magonjwa mengi and lakini Yesu ana nguvu ya kuponya. Even in earlier passages in Matthew we see Jesus healing many sick people. Hata kwenye vitabu vya mwanzo vya Mathayo Yesu aliponya wagonjwa. So in chapter 4 verse 23 this Kat- is what it says Katika- and he went throughout all Galilee teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction among the people. Matayo sura ya 4 mstari wa 23 naye alikuwa akizunguka katika galilaya yote akifundisha katika masinagogi yao na kuhubiri habari njema ya ufalme na kuponya ugonjwa na udhaifu wa kila namna katika watu. Chapter 8 verse 16 That evening they brought to him many who were oppressed by demons and he cast out the spirits with the word and healed all who were sick. Matayo 8:16 Hata kulipokuwa jioni wakamletea wengi wenye pepo akawatoa pepo kwa neno lake akawaponya wote waliokuwa hawawezi. Chapter 9 verse 35 And Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction. Matayo 9:35 Na Yesu alikuwa akizunguka katika miji yote na vijiji akifundisha katika masinagogi yao na kuhubiri habari njema ya ufalme na kuponya magonjwa yote na udhaifu and Matthew shows us that Jesus not only healed large numbers Jesus also healed the individual Lakini Yesu akuponya wengi tu aliponya hata mmoja mmoja So for example in Matthew 8 we see him healing the man with leprosy we see him healing the centurion's servant we see him healing Peter's mother-in-law he saw the individual and he healed them Kama katika Mathayo 8 tunaona Yesu alimponya mtu mwenye ukoma alimponya mkwe wa Petro alimponya mfanyakazi wa askari tunaona Yesu anaponya pia kila mtu mmoja mmoja so it's clear from the bible that Jesus Christ came to heal ni wazi katika biblia kuwa Yesu alikuja kuponya so the question is 2000 years later Jesus is no longer here is he still healing today Je baada ya miaka 2000 Yesu hayuko hapa? Je bado anaweza kuponya? Some of us may think well I don't think Jesus still heals it stopped with him. Wengine wanaweza kufikiri haiwezekani labda alipoondoka uponyaji ulikwisha. The truth is Jesus still heals today. Ukweli ni kwamba bado Yesu anaponya. And he does it through us. Na anafanya kupitia sisi. Listen to what John 14 says in verse 12. It says truly truly I say to you whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do and greater works than these will he do because i am going to the father Yohana 14:12 Yesu anasema Amen amen nawaambieni yeye aniaminie mimi kazi nizifanyazo mimi naye atazifanya naam na kubwa kuliko hizo The that Jesus Christ did the works and if you look at the context of that verse it refers to the miracles the things he did in power those things his disciples are also supposed to do if they believe in him Ukweli ni kwamba kazi zote alizozifanya Yesu Hata wanaomwamini wanaweza kuzifanya hivyo kama wataamua kumwamini. When Jesus went to the Father he sent the Holy Spirit. Yesu alipokwenda kwa Baba alimtuma Roho Mtakatifu. And the Holy Spirit gives us gifts. Na Roho Mtakatifu ametupa vipao. And among those gifts according to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9 are gifts of healing. Na moja ya hizo vipawa ukiangalia kwa Wakorintho wa kwanza 12 ni kipawa cha uponyaji. So through the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus's healing ministry continues today. 
Kwa hiyo kupitia nguvu ya Roho Mtakatifu uponyaji wa Yesu bado unaendelea mpaka leo. So we can stand on God's word and pray and believe that people will be healed. Kwa hiyo tunaweza kusimama katika neno la Mungu na kuomba na kuamini watu wanaponywa. Amen. Now does everyone we pray for get healed? Je, kila tunayemuombea anaweza kupona? Some may teach that Jesus heals every sickness, every disease, every person must be healed. Wengine wanaweza kufundisha kuwa Yesu anaponya kila ugonjwa na kila mtu lazima aponywe. The answer to this tough question I believe is that not everybody gets healed. Jibu ni kwamba sio kila mtu anaponywa. And the basis for this is not my own thoughts, it's the Bible. Na sio mawazo yangu ni kutoka kwenye Biblia. Although experience also shows that this is true. Japo pia ufahamu na tuliyopitia anaonyesha hii ni kweli. So why doesn't Jesus heal everyone? Kwa nini Yesu aponyi kila mtu? Let's look at some reasons we we are not able in the time we have to look at every reason but let's look at some reasons that show Jesus does not heal everyone. Tuangalie baadhi ya sababu hatuwezi kuangalia zote lakini tuangalie chache ambazo kwa nini Yesu aponyi kila mtu. And this should help us have a more firm faith. Na hii inaweza kutusaidia kuwa na imani iliyojengeka. Reason number one is because we live in a fallen world. Sababu ya kwanza kwa sababu tunaishi kwenye dunia iliyopotea. In Genesis chapter 2 we see God commanding Adam not to eat from that tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Katika kitabu cha mwanzo sura ya pili tunaona Mungu akimkataza Adam kula tunda katika mti wa ujuzi wa mema na mabaya. And he says in the day that you shall eat it you shall surely die. Na anasema siku utakayokula hakika utakufa. Adam and Eve ate from that tree. Adam na Eva walikula kutoka mti ule. They disobeyed God. Hawakumtii Mungu. And because they disobeyed God the world is corrupt. It na, has fallen from the state in which God had originally created it. Na kwa sababu hawakumtii Mungu dunia bado iko kwenye tabu kwa sababu waliamua kuishi kinyume na mapenzi ya Mungu. And part of being in a fallen world is that there is suffering, there is pain, there is sickness, there is death. Na changamoto ya kuishi kwenye dunia iliyopotea ndio sababu kuna magonjwa, kuna mateso na kuna kuna kufa. Now Jesus is redeeming the world. Na sasa Yesu amekuja katika kurekebisha but that work of redemption has not yet been completed lakini kazi ya ukombozi bado haijakamilika sickness and suffering are still part of day to day life magonjwa na mateso bado ni sehemu ya maisha the second reason why not everyone is healed is because god's kingdom has not yet fully come sababu ya pili ni kwa sababu ufalme wa mungu bado haujaja jesus began his ministry by proclaiming that the kingdom of god is near Yesu alianza uhubiri wake kwa kusema kwamba ufalme wa Mungu umekaribia. In Jesus the kingdom of God had come in a way that it had never come before. Kupitia Yesu ufalme wa Mungu umekuja kwa njia ambayo haujawahi kuwa hivyo. And if we look at those verses we read in Matthew 4:23, we see that the preaching of the kingdom went with the power of healing. And we see the same in Matthew 9:35 that the proclaiming of the gospel of the kingdom was accompanying accompanied by the healing of sickness and disease so the coming of the kingdom a demonstration of that was that people are healed from sickness and from disease na tunaona katika matayo sura ya 4 mstari sura ya 4 mstari wa 23 kwamba injili ya Yesu inakuja pamoja na uponyaji na kwenye matayo sura ya 9 tunaona vivyo hivyo but the kingdom has not fully come. Lakini ufalme bado haujaja. And that's why Jesus taught his disciples to pray your kingdom come. Na ndio sababu Yesu aliwafundisha wanafunzi wake waombe kwamba ufalme wako uje. There is another kingdom, the kingdom of darkness. Kwa sababu kuna ufalme mwingine ufalme wa giza. Where Satan and demons and witchcraft have power. Ambapo shetani na shetani na malaika zake wana nguvu and although the kingdom of god will ultimately 
be victorious there is war between these two kingdoms na pamoja na kuwa ufalme wa Mungu utashinda lakini bado kuna vita kati ya falme hizi mbili and as these two kingdoms are at war sickness and disease and other things that are part of the power of the kingdom of darkness will be part of our lives na kwa sababu kuna vita kati ya falme hizi mbili ufalme wa Mungu na ufalme wa giza bado magonjwa na tabu vitaendelea kuwa sehemu ya maisha yetu but one day the kingdom of god will be fully established lakini siku moja ufalme wa Mungu utakamilishwa we can look confidently to that future tunaangalia katika tumaini hilo thirdly tatu Jesus does not always heal because it's not always his will to heal. Yesu aponyi kwa sababu inawezekana Yesu hajaamua kuponya. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Katika Korinto ya pili sura ya 12. Paul describes these revelations that he had received from God. To keep him conceited God sent a messenger of Satan and this messenger of Satan gave him a thorn in the flesh. Na ili Paulo asijikweze, Mungu akatuma mjumbe wa shetani akaleta kake kama mwiba kwenye mwili wake. Now we don't have time to go into all the theology of that. Hatuna muda wa kupitia mafundisho hayo yote. But the point is this, Paul asked three times, God, please take away this thorn in the flesh. Lakini Paulo alimuomba Mungu mara tatu naomba utoe mwiba. He pleaded with God, take this away. Alimuomba Mungu nitolee hili. But God said no. He said my grace is sufficient. Mungu akamwambia uwezo wangu unakutosha. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Uwezo wangu unaonekana katika udhaifu. Paul wanted to be healed of the thorn in the flesh. Paulo alitaka kuponywa katika mwiba kwenye mwili wake. God had another plan for Paul. Mungu alikuwa na mipango mingine kwa Paulo. We serve a God who is much bigger than us. Tunamtumikia Mungu ambaye ana nguvu kuliko sisi. And his ways are way above our ways. Na njia zake ziko juu kuliko zetu. And sometimes his ways are hard. Na wakati mwingine ni ngumu. But that's why he's God and we are human. Ndio sababu yeye ni Mungu na sisi ni wanadamu. And we must trust him. Na sisi lazima tumtegemee. Coming out of that same passage in 2 Corinthians 12 is that the fourth reason and it's this because being sick can help us to be godly. Kutoka katika mstari huo wa Korinto 2:12 saba tisa tunaona pia sababu nyingine Yesu atponyi magonjwa ili tuweze kunyenyekea and you say sheshi being sick can make me godly i, I don't buy that unasema sheshi inawezekanaje kuumwa kunaweza kunifanya niwe na uungu but paul says that to keep him from being conceited to keep him humble that's why god allowed that suffering in his life lakini Paulo anasema ili aweze kuwa mnyenyekevu Mungu aliacha ule ugonjwa uwe katika mwili wake. God had revealed great and mighty things to Paul and he was in danger of getting puffed up. That was Paul's own assessment of himself. Mungu alifunulia Paulo mambo mengi sana. Kwa hiyo alimpa ugonjwa ili asijikweze so kwa sababu anajua mengi. So Paul understood the thorn in the flesh as something that helped him to see just how small he was and how great God was. Kwa hiyo Paulo alielewa ule ugonjwa wake ni kitu cha kumfanya anyenyekeze So sometimes the suffering in our life the sickness in our life helps us to become more like Christ. Kwa hiyo wakati mwingine magonjwa tulionayo yanatufanya tunyenyekee mbele za Mungu na kuwa kama Yesu. The wonderful thing is that the grace of God is sufficient. Ukweli ni kwamba neema ya Mungu yatutosha. And rather than us relying on ourselves and what we can do we get to trust in the power of God. Na ukweli ni kwamba wenyewe hatuwezi inabidi kumtegemea Mungu, kutegemea nguvu ya Mungu. This is what Matthew Henry said. Ndicho alichosema uh, mtu anaitwa Matthew Henry. He said sometimes Christ sees that we need the sickness for the good of our souls more than the healing for the ease of our bodies. Matayo Henry anasema wakati mwingine Yesu anaona tunahitaji kuugua kwa faida ya roho zetu badala ya kuponywa kwa unafuu wa miili yetu. Nothing in God is lost. Hakuna kitu kwa Mungu kinachopotea. The good and the bad. Mema na mabaya. The easy and the hard. Magumu na maraisi. The last reason 
is that because we lack faith. Sababu ya mwisho ni kwa sababu hatuna imani. And I put this last because sometimes this is the only reason we ever hear you don't have enough faith. Nimeweka hilo la mwisho kwa sababu hii ni sababu ambayo mara nyingi tunakuwa nayo. Which is so not true because we see many people in the Bible of faith who were sick. Tunaona mambo watu wengi kwenye Biblia wana imani. But there is a link between faith and healing. Lakini kuna kuna muunganiko kati ya uponyaji na imani. In Matthew chapter 13 It tells us that Jesus did not do many mighty works, many miracles in his own area because of the unbelief or the lack of faith of the people in his area. Katika Mathayo 13 tunaona Yesu akufanya mambo mengi katika mji wake aliyotoka kwa sababu watu hawakumwamini. So lack of faith is not the only reason people are not healed. Kwa kutokuwa na imani sio sababu pekee watu hawaponywi. But let's not minimize it and say ah there is no reason to think about faith. Jesus number of time would number of times said your faith has made you well lakini tusipuuze hilo kwa sababu hata Yesu mara nyingi aliwaambia watu imani yako imekuponya so let's ask god to put faith in us kwa hiyo tumuombe Mungu atujalie imani so what are the implications of the fact that not everybody is healed kwa hiyo ni vitu gani hasa vinatuonyesha kwa nini watu wengine hawaponywi the implication is that we will be surrounded by sick people ukweli ni kwamba siku zote wagonjwa watakuepo So we need to show love and compassion in ways other than the miraculous healing that comes from Jesus Christ. Kwa tunahitaji kuonyesha upendo na huruma kwa wengine wengi ambao wana mahitaji kuliko sisi. Loving the sick means caring for them. Kuwapenda wagonjwa inamaanisha kuwajali. Visiting them in hospital. Kuwatembelea mahospitalini. Paying for their medical care kuwalipia matibabu yao teaching them about good health kuwafundisha kuhusu afya njema praying for them to have hope through the sickness kuwaombea wapate faraja katika ugonjwa wao all of that is showing compassion showing love for the sick hayo yote ni kuonyesha huruma na upendo kwa wagonjwa and i'm excited that as a church we are on that journey na nafurahi kama kanisa tuko katika njia hiyo there will be times when we need to love the sick by sharing their pain as they go through the sickness. Kuna wakati mwingine tunahitajika kushiriki uchungu wa wagonjwa katika wanapopitia ugonjwa wao. Because not everyone is going to be healed. Sio kila mtu atakwenda kuponywa. I want to end by making reference to the bigger sickness, the sickness of sin. Nataka kumalizia kwa kuangalia dhambi kubwa kwa kuangalia ugonjwa mkubwa ambao ni dhambi because as bad as physical sickness is there is worse sickness there is spiritual sickness there is sin kama kulivyo kuugua ni kubaya ndivyo hivyo hivyo ni mbaya zaidi and still in in the book of matthew uh, a few chapters before our main verse we see jesus showing this to be the case in matthew chapter 9 katika sura za mwanzo za Yohana Yesu ameonekana akiwatibu watu na tutaangalia matayo sura ya tisa. And now, this is what it says. And as Jesus reclined at table in the house, behold many tax collectors and sinners came and were reclining with Jesus and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard it he said those who are well have no need of a physician but those who are sick go and learn what this means i desire mercy and not sacrifice for i came not to call the righteous but sinners Matayo 9:10-13 ikawa alipoketi nyumbani ale chakula tazama watu za ushuru wengi na wenye dhambi walikuja wakaketi pamoja na Yesu na wanafunzi wake mafarisayo walipoona wakawaambia wanafunzi wake mbona mwalimu wenu anakula pamoja na watu za ushuru na wenye dhambi naye aliposikia aliwaambia wenye afya hawahitaji tabibu bali walio hawawezi lakini nendeni mkajifunze maana yake maneno haya nataka rehema wala si sadaka kwa maana sikuja kuwaita wenye haki bali wenye dhambi so jesus compared sickness to sin Hayo Yesu anafananisha ugonjwa na dhambi. He, he was saying that sin is a form of sickness but it is spiritual sickness. Yesu anasema dhambi ni aina ya ugonjwa lakini ni ugonjwa wa kiroho. And it's not 
sickness that will be treated by a, a doctor like Omega or a doctor like Noella, you need a different kind of doctor to treat that sickness. Ugonjwa huu adhambi sio ugonjwa unaotibiwa na daktari wa kawaida wa magonjwa ya mwili kama Dr. Omega au Dr. Noela. Unahitaji daktari wa tofauti kuweza kutibiwa. Because he says that this sickness has to do with either being righteous or being a sinner. Righteous means you have a right relationship with God. Sinner means you have turned away from God and you are in rebellion against God. Na hii inaelezea kuwa either kuwa mwenye haki ukiwa na mahusiano mema na Mungu au kuwa na dhambi mbali na Mungu and it's interesting that he's talking to a group of pharisees there who found their righteousness in the things that they did na alikuwa anaongea na mafarisayo ambao alijiona wao ni wema kwenye matendo waliyoyafanya and that's not the kind of righteousness that jesus wants to give us na, he wants to give us a righteousness that comes from himself na sio aina ya utakatifu Yesu aliyotuletea alitaka kutupa utakatifu unaotoka kwake because the sin doctor is jesus kwa sababu daktari wa dhambi ni Yesu on the cross jesus christ shed his blood pale msalabani Yesu alimwaga damu yake and his blood was the medicine that we needed to be healed from the sickness of sin na damu yake ilikuwa ndio dawa tunayohitaji kwa ajili ya kupata tiba ya ugonjwa wa dhambi zetu. And that is the only way that we can truly be righteous before God is to believe in the shed blood of the sin doctor Jesus Christ who died for you and died for me. Na ndio ilikuwa uponyaji wetu pekee kumwamini Yesu ambaye ni daktari wa dhambi zetu yeye aliye mwana pekee wa Mungu aliyekufa kwa ajili yako wewe na mimi. So while we are talking about loving the city of Dar es Salaam We want to see people who are physically sick healed. Tunataka kuona watu ambao ni wagonjwa hasa kimwili wameponywa. And those who are not physically healed to be cared for in their sickness. Na wale ambao hawataponywa kimwili kuendelea kuwajali katika magonjwa yao. But we also want the people of Dar to realize that Jesus Christ is the only way to deal with the deeper problem, the deeper issue of the sickness of sin. Lakini tunataka watu wa Dar es Salaam watambue kuwa Yesu ndiye njia pekee ya kuangaika na matatizo yao ya ugonjwa wa dhambi. That will be to love the city of Dar es Salaam. Hiyo ndiyo kuipenda Dar es Salaam. Now this morning we have an opportunity to respond together to the word we have just heard. Kaya asubuhi ya leo tuna fursa ya kukubali neno tulilolisikia. We want to pray for anyone here who is sick. Tunataka kuomba kwa mtu yeyote anayeumwa mahali hapa. And maybe there is someone you know who is sick who's not here, you can represent that person and stand in faith for them. Lakini pia kama una mtu anaumwa na yuko hapa unaweza kuja kumwakilisha yeye So can I invite the worship team to come forward and, and, and lead us in a song and we can all be, be standing as they do Wote tunaweza kusimama huku timu ya sifa na kuabudu itakapotuongoza kwenye nyimbo And if you are sick in your body this morning I invite you to come forward so we can pray for you na kama unaumwa mwili wako nakukaribisha uje hapa mbele ili tuweze kuomba kwa ajili yako because god can heal you kwa sababu mungu anaweza kukuponya and let's ask god for faith to rise in us na tumuombe mungu kwa ajili ya imani ndani yetu that there will be testimonies in this place of the healing power of god changing lives kuwe na ushuhuda wa uponyaji katikati yetu i'd also like to invite us this morning to come and pray for compassion because we need compassion for those who will remain sick so maybe your prayer is i need more compassion i need to love the sick more i invite you to come forward as well let's pray and ask god to fill us with his love for the sick naomba nikukaribishe pia tuweze kuomba kuwa na huruma na upendo kwa ajili ya dar es salaam tuweze pia kuwa na huruma kuwaombea wagonjwa and finally i'd like to invite you to come forward if you haven't yet received Jesus Christ as your sin doctor. Lakini pia nikukaribisha hapa mbele kama bado hujampokea Yesu kuwa bwana na mwokozi wako ili awe 
daktari wa dhambi zako if you have not received the cleansing healing power of the blood of jesus christ forgiving your sins come forward would love to pray for you as well kama bado hujapokea pia nguvu ya uponyaji ya damu ya yesu na kukaribisha pia hapa mbele tuweze kuomba pamoja so worship team please lead us now